Okay, today we're going to be carving uh, some Santas. I'm going to be going over uh, mainly just the carving part. Um, I'm pretty bad at painting, uh, so I'll give you a few tips on it, maybe at the end. Um, and basically we're just going to be doing the head. And also, uh, it's kind of a style that um, basically that the hat is folded over so that uh, you can make it out of a small block of wood. Um, and these are kind of the basic sizes you can see that bass would generally come in uh, in the grab bags. Um, okay, and you can see they're all kind of about the same anyway in their measurements. Uh, just a matter of stylizing them into that flatness. Okay, so we've got our basswood here, and we'll sketch just a little bit on there, and uh, you know, do his uh, do his hat there. We're gonna have his little ball on top of his hat, and then his hat, of course, their hats are pointed, but it's folded over, so we're going to want to do that fold there, and uh, come down through there, have his nose about right there, have his eyes about there, okay, have his mustache, alright, and most of this will be gone as soon as we start shaping him a little bit, but, uh, you know, and then there's his, there's his beard there and a little bit of stuff, okay. Lower his hat just a little bit to get it all in there. Okay. Okay, so don't drop your knife on your foot. Um, most of this is going to be rounded, so go ahead and start going in there. Um, not sure, the grain is not quite straight in this piece of wood that I got. It's been getting worse and worse uh, qualities of basswood um, recently. Um, some of them are okay, some of them are not, and I can't tell if it's from my older stashes or what. Uh, so we're just going for basic shape right now. And if you don't have basswood, it'll definitely work out well too. Because um, for places like in the beard, uh, this stuff gets kind of hard for detail in such a soft wood like basswood. Um, but I'll show you a few tricks for getting around the softness. Um, it does help though, you know, as far as for for learning, just because of the speed. Certainly, teaching helps a lot to be able to, uh, you know, not have to sit here and work with the wood for so long. So we're kind of just shaping his hat now after we rounded him out a little bit. Kind of, this is this is the top of his, uh, what do you call that, the top of the trim of the hat, I'm getting that one right there, and we'll move on to a bit of a V-tool, and you'll want to take your time a little more, um, but sometimes I carve like this anyway, that uh, it's a little rough, and then I'll clean it up later, get some nicer cuts in there, okay, and then do the bottom part of it, and don't worry about it being perfect or symmetrical. Uh, you know that giving it uh, a little bit of asymmetry, a little bit of organic feel. It's how life is. It's how hats sit. Okay, and his hat's grounding. You know, what I mean by that is that it's not just a straight circle all around. Now that it uh, it sits on his hat, it sits on his head like this, goes down, right? Instead of just being straight across. So, just kind of curve this a little more. Okay, and let's define this ball here before we lose it. This is the ball on the end of the hat. Okay, it's going to be over there. Okay. 
circles are always difficult, especially when there's a slant involved. I'm trying to figure out which way the grain is going so you don't tear it out. Okay, so I'm going to set up all there. And I'm going to go ahead and finish up the top of his head. Alright, and then there's that fold that we were talking about, right? Because we're trying to just create the illusion that it was a, you know, a triangle pointy hat that flopped over in the front. And uh, you'll do that a lot in, in wood carving where you maybe don't have the wood or just it's the style that you want to go for that uh, you just want to make the illusion of depth. And so it's interesting. It's, it's kind of can be a little complicated because uh, it's kind of in between drawing and doing foreshortening and perspective and actually carving out, uh, you know, what's going on. Okay, let's see what's going on there. Now. Okay, so let's start forming his face a little bit. Yep, oh, there we go. And we're gonna go ahead and get his nose in there. It's gonna be about right there. I cannot find my favorite V tool, unfortunately, which is an old Dostra, but this one will do. So we're just kind of getting this shape um, that's happening in here, right? That there's going to be this space taken out, and that also there's going to be these spaces taken in here around the side of the bridge of the nose. Okay, so make that hat go in, make the eye sockets go in. Okay, and now his nose is going to be about right there. You want to give him a nice round bulbous nose. I don't, I don't know why, but Santa Claus is usually more recognizable with that bulbous nose. Let's go back to this one. And again, we're just getting the basic shapes out right now. Now let's take more out later. Can you thin up that bridge? Give it a little bit more. Okay, now we're making this defining the underneath the nose. And he's gonna be a happy Santa. You generally want to make the make his nose bulbous and round. Anything kind of on Santa, you want to make roundish. Because he's supposed to be jolly, which means no fat, basically, and happy. 
Okay, so we're getting some of the basic shape out here. Obviously looking a little rough. Okay, so do 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 okay stuff. So. Going with a smaller V tool here. Alright, so this is gonna be where his mustache is gonna be. And this is kind of what the doing a happy mustache is generally kind of doing a sick um, handlebar mustache. Okay, you can see the way it kind of gives him a bit of a smile there. Not sure if you can see that even. Send it out there. Okay, take away some material underneath his mustache. Where his mouth is going to be, we are going to open up his mouth a little bit. You don't have to, as long as you just get the lip in there a little bit, a little bit of a uh, U underneath there. Uh, oops, I'm out of screen. Get a little bit of a U underneath there. Uh, he'll tend to look like he's smiling. Okay, so. Okay, so we have his features kind of mapped out here, uh, but he's still very flat if you see him from the side there, and we don't want him to look like that. So we go ahead and pull everything back. It's also why we're not worried about the eyes or anything yet. It looks like maybe you know from here like oh it's not too deep, too much passes, but we gotta take away a lot from over here. Cheek down to okay. okay, so this hat's coming down a little too much, it's a little too frumpy. Basically, little moons, right? Because um, when when people smile, and this is characterized when people smile, their cheeks push their eyes up, and there's a there's a you know turns into an upside down moon. But you could think of it as a frown in the eyes, which is a little counterintuitive, but. And if you have a gouge, if you, really have one, if you have a gouge that's wide enough, you can just use uh, you can just use it for the cheeks and for the eyes. I'll show you kind of how that looks out here. This is a little bit too small, so it's not gonna work. But you'll get the idea. Okay. See how there's it. See how it makes it upside down ring, even for the cheeks too. And you can get a nice little rounding in there if you can, if you have that right shape. And certainly, at this size, you could do all of this with whittling as well. Just take you a little bit longer. Okay. Let's see if we can. 
this. And this piece is, is a little dry. I'm getting a few details, so just get a little bit of a little bit of uh, alcohol and water mixture it can help it. Uh, you don't want to spray too much on there, or else it will uh, just get mushy. See, this is a little separation right here between the eyebrows. Because uh, I generally will leave them as just kind of one big brow line. Uh, until a certain point. Trying to give the angles so uh, you can see most of these cuts here. Nose a little bit. Worry about the nostrils much later. Oop, went the wrong way for that grain. Right. And then define that nostril over there. Now, also, how deep or how 3D your carving gets, um, you know, it doesn't have to be as three dimensional. You can. Um, if you're going to be painting, um, you can show a lot of the shadowing um, and information in the painting. And uh, a good example of that is um, the the beach knees uh, or cypress knees. I'm sorry, the cypress knees that some people carve and some people don't carve at all. They just paint on them because uh, they're already kind of a hooded person shape. So to get that kind of curve on the outside of the mustache. So you can see the way I work is um, I don't really plan things a whole lot and uh, I just kind of go from one place to another. And it's just part of the, my philosophy as far as uh, letting my subconscious do the work and also not getting too caught up thinking what I you know what you need to do. So every time you go from one place to another, your brain gets, you know, it'll reevaluate what's going on. Um, how is this looking here? Can't really tell how the camera's seeing that. Um, and this will slant back a little bit. There's a little bit of a V there. And don't worry if your carving gets a little dirty, we'll clean them up later. A little bit of a, use a toothbrush or a nail brush, a little bit of soap and water, soap and water, and it'll take all of that uh, grime from your hands right off. Okay. Let me shake that mustache there. Okay, and he's a little flat. We're not gonna make him too 3D because it's gonna take forever to do that.
Okay, but uh, by the way, if you're carving at home, you should be wearing protection and even any kind of protection I promise you, you can still get injured. I've been wearing Kevlar gloves uh, and still had to take trips to the emergency rooms. But I tell you what, when you get those emergency room visit type of injuries, those are the ones that really uh, get you to carve safer. Um, you can tell I'm a bit of an aggressive, impatient uh, carver, relatively speaking. And uh, it took me a long time, a lot of a lot of injuries before um, my brain got enough um, warning mechanisms in place that it would uh, really tell me when I, was, when I was doing something wrong or, or uh, aiming a tool um, in the wrong place. brush here to get some of this stuff out so you can see it. Um, and sometimes I will use with a, uh, one of these curved guys to get in some of these uh, eye sockets. Uh, but these curved tools, they, uh, they have to be pushed on here for them to work since um, since you know you you can't um, whichever way the actual um, bevel is pointed, that's which way it has to go. So they don't work straight down like a normal ga gouge. Um, it has to be like this. It has to be balancing on something, which is why you should be needing it anyways, because you've gotten to a point where a straight gouge can't get in there. Yeah, because I see a lot of times guys will give, and I had the same problem too, like, <clears throat> got one of these tools and didn't understand how it worked, and it was like, you know, this tearing everything and whatnot. I didn't realize. And then you can see how that works there. And I got another one too, uh, this one, which is a little bit bigger, and you can see how that works. See, I'm not in that, in that one up use my thumb to get that action going on because otherwise it's just not going to work. When you're using V tools it can be a little uh, complicated um, because um, say if we're going oops down this way um, while this side of the Jesus Christ, this far side of the tool is going to be cutting uh, on the wrong side, right side of the grain, whereas this one's going to be going against the grain and tearing it. So what you kind of do is you maybe make a few cuts that are a little dirty, and then you go in and you do tilt it to one side to cut that side and then turn it back the other way to get the other side and lean on the side that it's supposed to be on. Okay, so and th these eyes, they will give you problems um, give me problems all the time. So alcohol will help a little bit um, it's just cross grain at that at that size, and some of these basswoods. It'll depend on on your 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 bag. You know, even when you get these things from, uh, you know, a company, they're still <clears throat> whatever quality control they have. They can't carve into that piece of wood and then give it to you, and they can't test it out. So this is an organic uh, material. Do, 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 do. Okay, and then he's going to have his beard like this.
this is a good um, good carving grip that uh, I don't ever see anywhere else um, to use with gouges and chisels, um, especially little ones. That it's kind of a stab one, and that you put your hand on. You know, it only works in some places, but you put your hand there, and make it real tight, so that uh, you're only using a little bit of this, and that basically that your hand can't you can't slip. You got to keep it on there so that, that it's basically holding it in that position, and that allows you to put a lot of strength into it, <clears throat> kind of with your hand. <clears throat> in any grip, when you're learning it, if it doesn't feel right and it's not working, don't do it. You know, you got to figure it out. <clears throat> on your own, um, I mean, I, when I tried to teach grips to people, it's just always horrible to watch, um, you know, so you just kind of, kind of try to imagine in your head, imagine what you're actually trying to accomplish with the wood, um, that's kind of what makes successful wood carving in general anyway, or at least working with the medium, because there's, um, you know, this is the art side of it, and then there's the, the sort of craft side of it. Um, yes, which I'm not doing real great on the craft side of it so far. Here. Okay, his beard's going to go up. We don't want to deal with ears, so we have his beard go up to about there. So it may seem like I'm doing this pretty fast, but um, it will probably take longer for me to clean this up than it would have if I had done it um, in a more proper way, proper fashion. But you know, for the videos, you can't really see it, so I don't really have to worry about it. Just trying to show you the main way to attack these guys and get them into a 3D shape. Um, you want to leave um, Santa's beard, it's got to be a little bit round, but see it's gotten a little bit too much point. And if it doesn't have a certain kind of um, the right curvature in it, it can start to look like um, basically other things. Um, you know, like maybe he'll look a little bit Indian or... Um, basically you just don't want too much body in it. Uh, I just want it to be kind of round without bulbing out too much at the sides. Um, and, and when I say Indian, I mean like these old um, characters that you see in uh, paintings and around the turbans and whatnot. Um, okay, so man, I wish I had my damn three tool. And I see here, I don't mind aiming right there, right at my hand, because I've got this going on right here. My palm is resting right here. It can't go anywhere else. The light, a little bit of action in my hand. Well, you don't want it right on there. Nose is a little messed up. In that baldness, you also want to get it on the top too. Um, and what I mean by that is not just um, on the sides, but this top right here. You want to make a little kind of bridge to the nose, even if it's a small one. Okay. Get a little closer to what we want.
Okay, this guy got a little bit higher than my other ones. So finish off his beard a little bit higher too. <laughs> Sick the worst carving technique ever. Okay. Um, okay, this is going to be a little bit of a hint of his robe. Cause just to get that color in uh, the white trim, and then just have a little bit of red at the bottom there. As you can see in these other guys. Um, yeah. I kind of did a bit of an antique um, sort of version where you know the the whites are not very white. I kind of like that a little more. Um, even if you don't go as dark as I do, you'll want to um, either use an antique white or uh, sometimes they call it parchment white now because um, it'll just it'll give it a little bit more of a saturated rich color um, instead of just using bright white, bright red. Um, that'll make the piece look a little bit much more complex, realistic since paint colors usually come way too bright so how my brain really sees stuff. Okay. Mustache there. Okay, and his robe is crossed over. And these are cuts that I would usually do with my V-Tool. Just shouldn't have made the damn video with that. I don't know where it is, so. Okay, so I'm going to be making the kind of lower lip here. Go that way and then that way. Do another cut right underneath it. Now I'll kind of make the teeth. We'll clean it up a little bit. Yeah, it's like the number one best carving technique is doing this right here, scraping it side by side to side. Mm, yeah. Okay. So, I really want him just to look a little jollier now. I want to bring out his eyes a little bit. Oh, it does seem like that. Um, and okay, I'm looking at it from the side here, and see this cheeks are um, way too, way too high still. Besides the fact that I dug wells for his eyes, and you want to keep those basically round on all parts, so we'll round those off.
Okay, so besides cleaning up, uh, we're, here we go. Besides cleaning up, we're about there, um, except for the mustache and beard. Now, usually when you're doing um, mustache and beard, on, especially on basswood, um, you'll want to you just mostly just straight up and down. But in his smile and this handlebar mustache, there's a bit more curve to it. And now that's not going to work very good in this uh, basswood. Uh, because it's just so splintery, even with alcohol and stuff and really sharp tools, um, that you kind of want to just fake it by doing, and also just really watching your planes on which way is going to be down and with the grain, um, and do it in and do it in sections and pieces. I do this with eyebrows too, that you know if there's going to be a line, if the line's going to go like, oops, oops you know, curve around like this or like this that you do one line like this another one like this whenever the plane starts to change switch and start going the other way I'll show you what I mean right here and I've seen a few guys do really stylized beards uh, mustaches too where they don't um, they leave it really thick um, really thick hairs and uh, it looks pretty good so um, I definitely would suggest going with that too especially if you're starting to have a hard time with it <clears throat> don't take too much wood away just do um, you know some really thick bars um, and very few between use a larger tool and just as long as you keep it consistent with the lower beard it shouldn't be a problem and um, with the lower beard get a little bit of curve you don't got it you don't have to do too much Again, there. Keep. Keep with the right plane. I didn't round this very much. You can see there's still a lot of flat space there. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit of that off. Just kind of keep it at varying depths. So you can see where it kind of stopped. Go to there and then go down with some other cuts and then maybe come back and connect it. Let's <laughs> look at the screen trying to do that. Okay. If you want to try to actually follow these uh, handlebars out, um, it can be really difficult. And um, you don't want to make too many whiskers there because it will start to split apart. Um, and then you'll lose your mustache and have to go back in a bunch with the other stuff. Um, and this is getting a little hard. Look, see when it goes sideways, I can see the wood pushing. So I'm not going to follow through with that. There's no way I'm trying to cut it out. And if it gets hairy, you always go to a single blade, even if it's if it's tedious, um, it's, because it's not only is it easier to sharpen um, single blade tools, but it puts less stress on the wood. No matter how sharp your V tool is, it's always going to be uh, going against physics more than um, a single blade. Yeah, so. So also turning upside down some of your gouges uh, to round some of these places like the like the cheeks really helps to make him look uh, make him look like he's fat jolly character and again you can do that for the the eyes too and for his nose we do want nostrils in there but very very small. So just kind of cut that out. Oh, is that even in camera? Whoops. Yeah, I kind of suck at the camera work. It's funny. I studied film too.
Okay, so. Okay, so I know this could go a little deeper. It could certainly be cleaned up a hell of a lot. Um, but with a little bit of color, I think we'd be good to go. All right, and again, uh, to show you a little bit of the different styles, kind of where you maybe might finish it off to. Um, again, you can see that uh, kind of oops, oops, vary on the. Uh, different shades of red and then a little bit on the styles and some of it's just into making it. This guy was really different. I uh, didn't really plan him very well. He has way too much eyeshadow. He looks a little angry. So, anyway. Alright. Happy carving. Uh, stop it.